Now we're getting ouch and about with our mobile clinic. Today, we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment or curious about a condition, then the Ouchmobile is the place for you. That is incredible. Zand is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Chris is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Zand is open for business. Can I have the next patient? Hi, Dr Zand. First in is 11-year-old Eugene with a question about an itchy ailment on his arms. So, Eugene, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, I've got something really itchy and annoying on my arms. What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I've got something really annoying and itchy on my arms-itis. Spot on. So what we're looking at here is actually something called eczema. It happens when too many skin cells are produced, and it's also a chance for Zahn to show off his doctor skills. What I can see here is xerodermia, lichenification, and excoriations. What that really means is it's just the Greek words for dry skin, itchiness, rough skin. Yeah, OK, Zahn. Anything you want to ask, Eugene? Is there anything I can do to make my eczema better? Keeping it really well moisturised will stop it itching and keep that skin looking nice. Beyond that, avoiding itchy fabrics like wool, nylon, polyester, things like that. Apart from that, one of the things you can do is get older. So as you get older, it's likely that it'll clear up, and lots of people who have eczema when they're children don't have it when they're adults. Away from the clinic, Chris is ouch and about in the park, solving your medical mysteries. Why do we get brain freeze when we eat ice cream? Well, it's to do with when the cold ice cream gets into your mouth, on a hot day, the nerves in your mouth contract all the blood vessels around your mouth, because blood is one of the ways of your body cooling itself down. So you get pain from the nerves from the cold, and you get changes in the amount of blood in your head, and that's what hurts. Why do you sprain your muscles? If you move a muscle when you're not ready to use it, you can actually tear all the little fibres that make it work. And they'll heal up, and they may even heal up stronger. That's why weightlifting makes us stronger. It tears our muscles. But in the short term, it swells up and it really hurts. But it almost always gets better. Back at the Ouchmobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's 11-year-old James with a curious case on his face. So, James, what's brought you to the Ouchmobile today? Well, I have a birthmark shaped like Britain. Wow! Look at that! What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds like a case of I've got a birthmark shaped like Britain on my face itis. That's exactly what I'd say. It really does look like Britain, doesn't it? All right, James, I want a bit of a geography lesson from you. Where are we on the birthmark? We are down there, down at the bottom. We're down there. As a doctor, I'm very interested in marks on people's faces, so I've got to check it out and make sure it's OK. I'm looking at the edges, I'm making sure they're not raised, they're not too irregular, that it's not bleeding. Everything about James's mark on his face says it's a normal, healthy birthmark. Why is my birthmark shaped like Britain? There isn't actually any rhyme or reason why birthmarks are shaped in particular ways, but your one is definitely the coolest one I've ever seen, though. It's also probably the most useful, because if you get lost, you can find yourself on the map on your face. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Ouch. Our next patient's day has taken an unexpected turn. Like that? No, Zand. Luckily, they've ended up in the right place. In accident and emergency with his mum and dad is 10-year-old Francis. What have you done, fella? I've stood on certain shore and stabbed deep in. That sounds nasty. Let's find out more. Francis was at home playing with his brother and their Labrador, Roxy. <coughs> Don't worry, I speak dog. Ruff, ruff. <coughs> right, OK, anyway. His brother had a great idea to go and play footy outside, so Francis made a quick dash for his kid. <coughs> Hold on, Chris. Roxy's not sure about this. She says there's a... <coughs> Don't be silly, Zand. Football's brilliant. <coughs> no, Roxy's not happy. She says... <coughs> Stop! What's on? What? There's ten kids wearing flares! What? Oh, no, sorry, wait. There's a tin lid on the stairs. Too late! He stood on it and cut his foot. Ouch! Here to find out why there was a can on the stairs, amongst other things, is nurse practitioner Julia Maxted. Can you tell me what happened? I stood on a lid of a vegetable soup can. Ooh, I love vegetable soup. And so it was the actual lid bit that you stood yeah. on the 
But where did this can come from? Who left it there? The dog. The dog? Dog's eating soup. So Roxy's a soup-eating dog? Now I've heard it all. Nurse Julia takes off Francis's bandage. Gross alert, look away now if you want. And gives the wound a clean so she can see what's going on. Nurse Julia checks the feeling and movement to make sure he hasn't done any damage deeper in his foot. It's actually it's really quite superficial. I'll close it with some Steri strips just to help keep it clean and stop it from oozing. Sounds like he's had a lucky escape. But what about the dog? Maybe it's going to be careful with the vegetable soup now. Yeah, maybe just soup from a packet from now on. With the wound all closed up, it's time for Francis to head home. And what's today's lesson been? To make sure that I'm looking where I'm going. Because at, at the time, I weren't paying attention whatsoever on what I was stepping on. Good plan. Bye! Bye.